In the previous videos, we have added these fields in the Edit Connect page. In this video, we are going to work on validations. Right, for example, the name should be required. Email address should be a valid email address. To do that, we are going to go to the solution and then we click on Manage NuGet Package. Let's search Community Community Toolkit. And when we do that, we can see we have this community toolkit.maui. And let's just select our project and click on install. And I accept. So the toolkit is installed as a NuGet package. Right? But then here it's reminding us that we need to add this line to our Maui program.cs. So let's go over here. And then let's add this line here. And then this actually resolved the problem. We have this using community toolkit dot Maui. This is automatically added for us. So we just added this line, which is indicated in the uh, readme file. So we initialize our toolkit in there, right? So this is for initializing the toolkit. Let's close the readme file. Coming back to the edit connect page. So how do we use the toolkit? In the toolkit, there are different, of course, there are different things. The ones that we're interested in are the validation behaviors. So for example, the name should be a required field, right? Meaning that it cannot be empty. So for that, we can come over here, enter the entry, like within the entry, we can say entry.behaviors, right? So this is, this is part of the community toolkit that we just installed. And then uh, we can then use toolkit. This namespace does not exist, right? So we can create that namespace here, just like we created this extension namespace. So we need to do XML, XML namespace, colon, toolkit. You don't have to call it toolkit. You can call it whatever you want. But here we need to refer to the toolkit, right? The Maui toolkit that we just added. And then here we can use toolkit colon. And you can see there's different behaviors, right? Um, there's even the animation behavior you can use for animation, but today we're going to cover some of the validation behaviors. All right, first of all, for required field, we can use the text behavior, which is at the bottom, right? Text behavior. And then you can close it. Don't have to close it this like this. We can close it just like this. There's several properties in here. To make this text validation behavior uh, work like a required field validation behavior, we can just set the minimum length to be one, right? So at least there has to be one character, right? Um, another important property here is the flags. So this configures the behavior of this text validation. So do we validate on attaching? Do we validate on the focusing of the entry field or do we validate on value change? I would suggest to validate on a combination of both attaching, right? So you can do a comma and then validate on value change. Right? So this guarantees that in any scenario it's going to work. For example, let's say this is a add contact page. So when you come to the add contact page, all of the fields are empty. So you're looking at the name field, and if you don't even touch it, if you only specify the validate on value change flag here, then when you click on the add button or submit button, it's not even going to trigger the validation because you didn't even change anything. You didn't even touch the field. So the field is not dirty. It's not going to actually trigger the validation at all. That's why we also need the validate on attaching. That means that when the validation behavior is, is attached to the entry field, it does the validation already, right? Which it will see that the field is empty and then it will know that it's invalid. So we need a combination of this, right? And then in order to reference the validation field, uh, we need to give it a name. So we can call it name validator. 
Another important property I want to mention, but I'm not going to use today, is the regular expression pattern property. Right? So you can use this to limit uh, the format of the text in the entry field. So let's delete this. Okay. So we're saying that name is a required field. Right? So, so then how do we spit out the error message? So for that, we can go to the code behind. So let's go to the code behind. And just before everything in the update clicked event handler, uh, we can then say if if name validator is valid, there is a is valid and, or is not valid. So if it's not valid, then we're going to just return, right? But before we return, we can spit up the error message by saying display alert. And then the title is error. The message is name is required. Right? And then you say OK. So this will help us to validate the name. So let's give it a try. OK, the application is running. And let's go to one of the contact. And of course, you know, we only apply the validator on the name field. And there is a value in here. So it definitely is valid. So let's actually give it a try. Click on update. Nothing's happening. It's valid. So let's go back. And then let's try to delete these field. Delete the name field. And click on the update. Now the error is showing. It's complaining that name is required. So now let's go back. And let's put some name over here. Let's just say whatever name. And then click on the update button again. Now it's updated. We can see the updated name over here. And then let's go back and fix the name. Okay, that's a simple validation. So let's add another one, which is for email validation. So let's go to email. So when we look at the email address, of course, uh, we may think we need multiple validation behaviors because the email address may be required, right? For a contact application, maybe email address is not actually required, but for demonstration purpose, I want to make it uh, a little bit complex than name, right? Let's say that email address is required. And of course, email address format has to be correct email address format, right? So for that, we actually have a thing in the toolkit that is called multi-validation behavior. So let's use that. Right, because that one, um, within the multi-validation behavior, you can combine different validation behaviors. So in here, again, we're, we're going to say entry.behaviors. Right? And then within that, we're going to have toolkit, and then we're going to have a multi-validation behavior. Okay, And of course, we are going to give it a name we need to um, reference that and we're going to call it email validator and the flags will be the same so let's copy these two and then within the multi-validation behavior we can have multiple validation behaviors so the first one would be the text validation All right so let's copy the previous text validation behavior over here and then let's uh, remove the name because we don't need a name for this Right, so this validation behavior provides us the required field validation. Right. Secondly, we will need the email validation behavior and our same flags. Inside multi-validation behavior, there's a way to provide error messages. Right. So to do that, we're going to say toolkit dot multi-validation behavior dot error message. Right. And then here, uh, in the text validation behavior, we can just say email is required, right? And then let's copy this over to the email validation. And the message would be different. Um, email format is invalid. And now we're ready to go back to our code behind to trigger the validation for the multi-validation behavior. And for that, we are just going to use the same way. We're going to say email validator. If it's invalid, then, of course, going to return first. And then before that, we are going to loop through 
the error messages of the multi-validation uh, behavior. Right? So for each error in email validator dot errors, you see it's a list of objects, but it's actually a list of string. So for that, we can just display the alert. We can display multiple alert. Or you can combine them together in a string builder, for example, and then just display everything in one display alert, right? in one alert. But to simplify this, I'm just going to show all of them one by one. So error, and then we can say to string. So this is the message, and then the cancel button is OK. All right, so let's give it a try. OK, let's go to one of them. Okay, so of, of course I have a valid email address already. So let's test this. Let's delete the field and then click on the update button. It says the email format is invalid. And then it also says email is required. All right. So it spit out all of the error messages that we are expecting. So let's say I'm going to put an invalid email address, A B C. So click on the update. Now I see email format is invalid. Click on OK. You can see that the required field validation is not triggered anymore. So I can just provide a email address. Click on update button. Going back, you can see that my email address is changed. Validation behavior is not triggered. So everything works correctly. So this is what I want to show in this video. I'll see you in the next one.